So the UK has been detaining immigrants for quite some time. Um, in my work, I date it to the um, passage of the Immigration Appeals Act of 1969 as being the most important piece of legislation that led to the creation of what we would recognise today as an immigration detention system. However, Britain has been detaining foreigners uh, prior to that since at least the passage of the 1905 Aliens Act. The contemporary system, though, it really um, relates to the early 21st century under the premiership of Tony Blair and New Labour, which is when they started building uh, more and more of these centres. So there are around uh, 4,000 bed spaces available, 1,000 of which are in prisons for people held under Immigration Act powers and 3,000 of which, give or take a few, are in immigration removal centres. And so on any one day, about 4,000, between three and 4,000 people are detained. Over the course of the year, that number goes up to uh, about 30,000 because there's a very rapid turnover. And to some extent, detainees come from anywhere in the world. They, the only requirement to be detained is that you're not a British citizen. In fact, they tend to concentrate from former British colonies. Um, the, the largest populations at the moment are from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. Um, there are a lot of Nigerians and Jamaicans as well. And then there are also populations from current war zones, as you might expect. So um, Syria, Afghanistan, or places that have recently been at war, Iran, Iraq as well. So there are many different ways in which you can be detained if you are a non-British citizen. Um, you can be detained following the completion of a prison sentence and you can be detained for overstaying your visa, you can be detained for violating the terms of your visa and you can be detained for uh, not having a visa at all, so arriving, <coughs> pardon me, arriving without documents. Um, and each of those reasons for detention will, will lead you in a slightly different way to detention centres. So foreign national offenders can have a deportation order given to them as part of their criminal sentence. And a deportation order usually will uh, end up in a period of detention unless the uh, Home Office manages to deport someone from the gates of the prison, which they do sometimes, but they don't always do. So for those people, it's actually part of their criminal justice proceedings. Uh, for everybody else, it, you will be detained um, based on um, engagement with the Home Office. And so that could happen either when you're signing on for your asylum case, or if they do a workplace raid, or if you are brought in on the back of a lorry and they're dropped off on a highway and somebody, hands you, you know, somebody finds you and hands you into the police. So there's all sorts of ways in which you can get to detention. So one of the profound uh, characteristics of immigration detention in the UK, which is quite distinct, is that the, uh, the UK has not signed the European Returns Directive. And so what this means is that there's no statutory upper limit to immigration detention. So in theory, people can be held in immigration detention forever. In practice, the vast majority of people are only held in detention relatively briefly um, for you know, a month or so. However, there is a persistent and fairly significant number who are held for over six months. And the reason why people are held for different amounts of time depends really on their legal case. So, so when you're in detention, you can continue to make um, legal applications to have your, your uh, removal or your deportation order suspended or lifted. And in fact, it, it's worthwhile doing that if you're a detainee because up to around about 50% of detainees every year are released back into the British community, either given temporary admission by the Home Office or awarded bail by an immigration judge. <laughs>